Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have something on the bench here. It's very expensive and it needs a lot of love. And the reason I'm bringing you this video is because these devices, I believe, are gonna start dropping like flies. This would be the Medtronic NIM3 Neuromonitor. So Neuromonitor, I have another video on it. It actually is a type of device where it will input a signal on a known nerve and nerves are like a piece of wire. So if you input a signal in one piece of a wire, you can go further down the wire and you can test it and you will see if that's wire or not. You know, kind of like a signal tracer. That's exactly what this device is. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look into this neuromonitor and why I believe they're gonna start dropping like flies. Okay guys, this is gonna be my first video from the uh, studio area that I've been uh, cleaning out, building out, and uh, coming up with so that I can do better videos. I'm gonna have functional camera mounts, etc. It's gonna be great. Right now, uh, this just kinda showed up my doorstep and I'm gonna see what I can do to put you guys together a little video showing you some of the problems that we're gonna have with these Medtronic NIM 3.0s, neural monitors. Okay, so you can see that this guy has had an interesting 15, 20 minutes, all right? So uh, in order to take this guy apart, there is a set of screws that come in the back all the way around. I don't know, there's like six or eight of them. And then once you get those out, then there is a set of two beams that run along the bottom. You gotta take those out because that holds the plastic case to the metal tray. So once you get those ones out, then you are going to have a series of other fasteners here on the back plate. And this is the actual back plate right there. You see that? You can see that there's four fastener holes on that. So those guys have to come out. And once those guys come out, that back plate will actually be mounted with two studs right here. Now, this guy is actually the computer of this device. So this is the problem down here. But... Let's go ahead and take a look through some of the other stuff that's going on in here. Now this guy here is obviously some sort of power supply or it's the generator, the RF generator. So we have a series of DC to DC converters right here. And then we have the little daughter card right here which outputs to your pendant which has your breakouts for all your different uh, neuro studs. And uh, so this guy here is really just a generator board and this one here is a daughter board. Can see right there. Yep. Pretty simple. And so those signals here come down to, I believe, is this guy right here. All right. It's a cute little guy. Uh, I'll have to do a little more research on it to see what the heck this guy is. Um, I can't see any real part numbers or anything. It says Medtronic 2012. Kind of reminds me of one of those SOC, the system on chip or like mini PCs. But this PC mates up directly on this PC. And this one here, this one is actually the problem. So I don't know yet. Uh, I'll try and find a part number for this whole board. If you can find it, then that whole board would probably fix the problem that we're experiencing. And that problem is going to be unhandled exception errors for Windows. Now, Windows XP embedded is what this guy runs off of. And the older Windows are extremely fussy when it comes to things like your CMOS being set up incorrectly. And on this guy here, we have a soldered in coin cell battery. And this guy, it, it normally has a piece of Kapton tape on it. I tore that off so I could do proper voltage measurements. But here you can set uh, one of your leads on one side of the battery and then notice right off here, let's see if I can get down there. See that little uh, stud right there? That is a test point. And that would probably be the test point for the positive leg of that battery. And um, between the two points, there you go. You can test your coin cell. Um, this coin cell here is reading 0.67 of a volt. And my CMOS is all messed up. It will not hold date and time settings. Date and time settings not being held up uh, does give Windows a lot of headaches. So whenever I run into Windows errors, the first thing I do is obviously check your CMOS. And since this guy is soldered in, it is not a quick and easy fix. I have to pull out that board. I have to desolder. There's a three pins on that guy. I will leave the part number for that battery. I found them for 10 to $16. 
and you can get them. It's it's not that difficult, but the fact of the matter is is that it's just a pain to get to, and you have to desolder it, which it looks like it's an easier one to desolder. So anyway, there we go. And let's see what other we have a sound cord, uh, sound card. Ah, I can't even talk today. So this is a Medtronic designed sound card. How cool is that? Power comes in. You've got all your different ports right here. And on, uh, see this sound card mounts on the top of the hood for your PC. And also on top of the hood is this power breakout board. Can you see that? So we've got power inputs and then all the various power outputs. Pretty neat stuff. So, uh, so far, all that I can tell, it boots up all right, and as soon as it gets into Windows, it throws uh, I.O. errors, not I.O., it's exception errors. Um, so anyway, the exception errors could be something else, but I'm gonna start with the coin, the coin cell and make sure that it's got a correct date and time, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and boot it up. First, I'm gonna make a copy of the Compact Flash right here. So the compact flash, there you go. So I'm gonna make a copy of that for archival reasons and I will make a copy of it on uh, a flash card, just the same. Uh, I usually keep copies and you can see I've got my reader right there. I keep copies of all sorts of medical devices because you never know when you need uh, certain driver files or to partially rebuild a directory structure or something. So I always keep archives of various devices, especially if they have removable flash. Heck yes. So anyway, guys, there you go. That is a NIM 3.0. And I have heard of several people having these errors where they start popping up Windows errors randomly and crashing. And believe it or not, that does often have something to do with this little bad boy right here. Since this is probably not an encrypted drive, I'm also going to take my windows and I'm gonna open it up on my other PC and uh, I'm gonna check and see how full the drive is for one because if the drives full uh, for whatever reason then it's it's not gonna have a swap file and if it doesn't have a swap file you're also gonna get random crashes so anyway guys there you go that is it that is the NIM 3.0 we have software problems in Windows I believe a lot of that is due to this doohickey right back here the date and time not being set and everything else looks like it checks out. We have a lot of these electrolytic capacitors. They're all checking out. Um, I haven't checked the outputs from the um, switch mode power supply yet, but I think it'll be just fine. To be honest, it boots up pretty regularly. Um, pretty cool device. Very complex, very compact for what it is, and crazy expensive. This guy right here, I believe when it first came out, it was like $80,000. And here it is sitting on my bench, $80,000 worth of medical equipment. And um, I'm gonna show it a little bit of love. So guys, coin cell batteries are only good for about five to six years at, at best. But here we are, uh, coin cell I think is completely dead. And I believe it's creating a lot of extra errors. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I'm going to maybe do a follow-up once I replace this coin cell and we'll take a look and see if that solves some of these problems. I don't know, but at the very least, me tearing this all down, I'm gonna have an archive software from the NIM 3.0, which is a pretty big plus because uh, once you have archive software, now if there's anything like, uh, let's say service menus or anything that are hidden or service menus that have passwords and you can't get into them, remember? Now we do have the authorization to uh, crack software and maintain our own equipment. So having that archive of software can come out to be a plus sometimes. We're gonna see. So once I get this guy all booted up, we're gonna give it a try, see if I can get it up and going. But since I've heard of so many of these dying recently, I would say that the one thing that they all have in common is probably the fact that they have this cute little battery that maintains their date and time and your IO settings. And since it is an exception or a driver or IO issue, that's probably where I would start when it comes to CMOS. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.